Hello, hello, everybody. It is 2.38 p.m. Central Time on the 16th of February, 2021. It's Tuesday here in the United States, and I hope you're doing well. You're probably doing better than I am, and if you don't know, if you're a viewer of mine, a beloved Miss Wednesday has passed away, and she's 22 years old, and on Valentine's Day of all days. And this is episode is dedicated to my most beautiful cat. That being said, let's jump into the earthquakes. I've been absent for a few days, of course, in mourning, and I, I was a blubbering fool for the past couple days, guys, so you wouldn't have wanted to hear me, but a big earthquake struck up off the coast of Fukushima, Japan, the coast of Honshu, more specifically, just north by northeast of Tokyo, and it came in, I think, originally at 73 USGS now has it at 7.1. Again, this is two days ago. All sorts of video. I don't want to step on anybody's copyright or whatever, but video showing major damage and major shaking coming off of this. This is about 50 miles to 75 miles off the coast, and we will pull the coordinates on this, but before we do that, let me just explain to new viewers what we're looking at. We're using the USGS and the EMSC feeds to give us a good idea of what struck. And we're looking at about two and a half days worth of quakes right here. So it's a fair amount of what's going on. And then the deep earthquakes are raised high off the globe. So you can see where the deep earthquakes are versus the shallow earthquakes up towards the surface. For, for instance, the seven point whatever up here in Japan, shallow caused major damage and major shaking across on land, even though it's 50 miles out in the ocean. So we'll pull the coordinates here first at Nami or Nami, Japan. 49.9 kilometer depth. We'll put the coordinates in and just go see where it is in proximity to the other locations. Now, this is the third seven in the past week and a half. A lot of seismic activity going on around the planet, and this seven is kind of fulfilling what we were expecting overall in the Pacific. I'll get to that in a second, too. Here's Iwaki, and here's Fukushima. This is the Fukushima Prefecture. And I don't know exactly where Fukushima is along through here or where it was. I know that they've got uh, now coal-fired plants and a bunch of other th things going on. I should know exactly where it is, but I don't. It's one of these locations right through here. It's, of course, been torn down and got a bunch of storage tanks there now where the old reactor used to be. Now, that reactor was damaged when a huge 9.0 earthquake struck out here off the coast. Now, I'd like to take everybody back in time to 2011, before the 9.0 earthquake struck. A 7.1 to 7.2 earthquake struck right here off the coast of Tokyo about three days before the big one hit in 2011. It was preceded by a 7 and a bunch of other 4s, 5s, and 6s that accompanied it going on for about two and a half to three days leading up to the big one. Now, this happened on the 13th the 7.1, so it's been three days, and I think we're beyond that threshold, but never say never. Now, look what's going on on both sides of the 7. Look up to the north, for instance. Let me show this to you. It's a 4.9. Now, look, the, almost the same distance, if you go around the bend of the plate down to the south, do you see that? It's another 4.9. And down to the south from there, a 5.1 on the Izu Ridge, and all the way up to the north, a 5.3. Now, if we take this 5.1 plus this 4.9, it equals 5.149. And if we add in another 4.9, we're at 5.2 or 5.2.9, 5.29. So, in other words, we're right at that 5.3 level if we combine everything coming up on both sides of the plate boundary, which I will show to you now on the plate boundary map from the USGS. When we go over here, south of Japan. Do you see how it spreads out in two directions, down towards Taiwan and, of course, down the Izu Ridge and back around Guam, and it meets down here to the south? Well, the spread has a cumulative total. Think of this like a flowing river that breaks apart down here to the south, spreads to the west, spreads to the east, but it recombines here on the coast of Japan. Then it carries on further up to the north, and we have the same sized earthquakes going all the way across in the past two to three days. Look at it. Here, let me get all the smallers out of there, and you'll see it. Here is the 5.0 and greater. 
So 5.2, 5.3, 5.3 going across the Aleutians, and those two are somewhat equally spaced across the North Pacific. So it's a big spread that's been going on. Now, let me show you something. This is just wild. Since the 7 struck, a new 6 point something, I'll call it a 6 point something because it was anywhere from 6.2 to 6.7, struck on the north side of New Caledonia. Why does that matter? Let's go back to the start of the week. There's our other 7.7. Yeah, 7.7. So 7.7 struck there, 7.1 struck up in Japan, and we go over here and a 7 struck just 7 days ago, right over here in Indonesia. So really, or I'm sorry, right at the Indonesia-Philippines border region. That's where it struck. And it's really three different sevens equally spaced. Let me show it to you this way. We're going to go look at the 30-day feed from the USGS. We don't normally look at this. And I want to show you the past month so you can really understand what's happened on both sides of the Pacific. Okay, there we go. So let's get the sevens on here first. Do you see? Okay, so 7.1 in Japan, we just got done talking about. The 7.7 .7 that struck down here right next to New Caledonia to the east, and the 7 that struck at the Philippines-Indonesia border region. Now, you see how they're somewhat equally spaced as well. And we can go over here and look at the red line map. 7.7, 7.0, 7.1. Boom, boom, boom. Three sides of the West Pacific hit with sevens in the past several weeks, which is somewhat abnormal. We went many months without any 7.0 activity at all, and then now we're back. Boom, boom, boom. But now look at this. Let's take it down to sixes, and you're going to see the sixes fill in the middle points between the sevens as the spread is happening. Now we'll go over across. Check this out. Same thing going on down here to the south. This was a 7.1, USGS 6.9. This was a 6.9, USGS downgrade is 6.4. And this was a 6.9, USGS downgrade is 6.7. So in other words, 6.9, 6.9, and 7.1 struck here. And a 7.1, a 7.0, and a 7.7 .7 struck here on both sides of the Pacific in the past several weeks. Now, really, it's just been in the past two weeks, really, that a lot of this has happened. Now, if we look at the fives, the fives connect between where the sixes are. So, it goes sevens, connected in between by sixes, which are connected in between by fives, and the spacing is almost perfect, going around the bends of the plate boundary. Now, we have a new deep earthquake that just popped off last night into this morning on the north side of Java. But I'd like to show it to you on the red line map here. We are on the interior side of the plate boundary. So I would watch on the northwest side of Java. That means up here. That's Sumatra, Indonesia, by the way. In Sumatra, Indonesia, for the potential of a larger earthquake than the 5.1. Up to at least a magnitude larger within the next 7 to 10 days. Now we're going to look where the two sets of rings overlap. That's central Sumatra. So one magnitude larger at least. Central Sumatra, get ready for it. Additionally, back behind it, over here on this side, I want you to look at it. Oh, let's see if I can even get this on here. There we go. Do you see the three-dimensional bubble around this now and how the arms or the edges of the bubble reach out to the west and to the east? Now look where it reaches over to the east. Do you see where the other rings overlap? That's right on East Timor. So on both sides of here, Central Java, or I'm sorry, Central Sumatra and East Timor, both are going to be hit. I would think the larger earthquake would strike on the western side. Again, like I said, going up into the sixth level or greater. Back behind it, I would look for about a half magnitude less, so the difference really isn't that much, but that puts us still into the upper five level. Hey, hold on. Ha. <laughs> when did this hit? 1909 UTC. Okay, well, that's the re most recent earthquake there. That's not a new earthquake. That's about an hour old. Where the rings overlap, right here, that's where we watch. So on both sides, Sumatra, and East Timor. Let me turn these bubbles back off. And let's go over to the West. Let's go over into Asia and Europe. 
where we have a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes. Remember, we were talking about 4.9s over here, were we not? Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention the 4s. The 4s fill in between the 5s. And so, for instance, we have 4.9, 4.9, on all three sides of Japan. When I say all three, there really isn't a fourth side over here to the east. We have to go up and around, like I said, over into Alaska for that northeasterly side of Japan. But it's all the same sized earthquakes spreading out going over to the west. And a day and a half, two days ago, 6.0, 5.9 struck on the plate boundary north of Pakistan, right south of Afghanistan, right where the red line is. So a spread of activity is going on, going out across the plate boundaries, and lo and behold, as if we needed any more signs of the same sized earthquake spreading out, I'm showing you everything 4.0 and greater reported from the USGS, and that's just wild, isn't it? So now let's go back to the seven-day feed, now that you've seen the past 30 days, it matters. You really need to see. Again, I don't normally show the 30-day feed, but you got to understand what's happened in the past couple weeks. The spread around the whole Pacific is due to these deep earthquakes that are spreading off across the plate. So the deep earthquakes are really hammering in on the underside of the plate. I explain this in almost every update, but what I think is going on here is a series of concentric waves but it could be ULF, ultra low frequency, very low frequency. Could be some kind of plasma induced vibration, like a big bass drum coming up out of the core of the earth. But it's coming up under the underside of the plate. And when it hammers in, watch one more time, the full combined force of the wave focuses in on itself in a singularity or a spike. And I think that's what's happening with the deep earthquakes. So when the spread starts to happen, the first thing that starts it is the big hammering action. Then the spread takes place via a standing wave of some kind. Thousands of miles long, of course, but the peaks or the valleys, wherever the or the trough of the wave, the height or the bottom of the wave, that that is where I think the earthquake is occurring. Amazing, right? Okay, let's get this turned off. And hold on one second, guys. Okay, Duchess is grabbing me a V8. Ah, my throat. Guys, I've been outside shoveling. By the way, winter wonderland here. I am not joking. It is like 12 degrees Fahrenheit out for a high. And it was like 0 or negative 1 Fahrenheit last night. I don't even know what that is in Celsius. But I'm out there today shoveling and doing things. Duchess helping me too. Um, We'll take that one. Thank you. Yes, I don't get anything for plugging V8. They're not a sponsor yet. V8 Energy. I don't know if that's going to help, but word up to my homies. Now, let's get over and go over into Europe because a 5.9 striking last week over in Afghanistan was followed this week by new 4.0 range activity creeping up into Greece, a new deep earthquake happened, which you don't see here on the screen, but New Deep Earthquake happened right here below Bosnia, where Bosnia goes up, I think, into Serbia. Let's go back and check the USGS map for the right names here. Yep, Bosnia, Serbia, right there, right below here, Deep Earthquake happened last night, near 3.0. It's somewhat rare to get deep earthquakes in Eastern Europe, so when I see any kind of deep earthquakes below this spot, I watch around it for new larger earthquakes, a magnitude or more larger. And like I said, it was a 3, so or 2.7, near 3. So we would look for a magnitude larger. That puts us at 4. But there's more coming in. Like I said, the 5.9 that struck at the start of the last week, plus the new 4s and 3s coming across the plate. It's pretty obvious. Now, we're looking at... This is just the one-day feed. Let me turn back on the seven-day feed. Again, this is just 24 hours, what we're looking at right here. We were looking at 30 days, turned on the one-day feed, Here's the last, let's look at the last 48. Do you see what I'm saying? A spread going across. Oh no, that deep earthquake is in, is still on there. You can see it. There it is. So the deep earthquake is still there. All around it, movement. Big movement down to the south, or bigger mid-range four. 
But the big push is coming in from Asia. So the big push means new 6.0 level activity is going to be rolling in back down into South Europe, most likely right next to Crete. On the plate boundary, let me show it to you this way. Right down here, south bend of Crete. I'd look on the west side of Crete this time. So going up to the plate boundary into Italy, a new near 6 is due because, again, 5.9 was pushed in last week. 4s have reached over here. It's now going underneath the plate around the outside edge. That means new large activity is due right around the area coming in. This is like a flowing river again, so we use the flowing river analogy. We've got a big deposit or big storm that just dumped a lot of rain on the river, and it's flowing this way. And it pulls up here, spreads up into a dead end, up into Italy, and then it goes out to the west, out to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it's coming from here, it's going over to here, and we're going to reach into here, it's going to break. When it breaks, it'll spread three ways. One way will go up around Romania, around Ukraine, up into Poland. The other direction will be going up into Italy. And the third final direction will be over to the west, across cross through Spain again at Gibraltar. So I have to warn all the people in these areas. Let's start down here at Greece, near 6.0 level, next to Crete. Going to the north, I would expect new mid-range 4 activity to come in at Romania going up into Ukraine. And it could be on the Ukraine side of the border this time, or right around the bend. But we have to warn everybody from North Romania into Ukraine. Again, it's just big enough to get your attention, maybe cause light damage, let them know. Italy is going to be in the 4 range, it looks like, at least for now. And it should be down here to the south, centered around the volcanoes, Sicily, south boot tip of Italy, and it's where all the rings kind of overlap overlap on Campobasso. So I would watch Campobasso south to Mount Etna. Over to the west, France. Oh, oui, you were struck by a three. But it's next to the Chain de Pois. Oh, wait, the Chain de Pouis. Let's go look it up. Over in France, it's a volcanic field in South France getting hit. And whenever it gets hit, I like to show it because most people don't equate France with volcanoes. Well, most people who don't live in France. Let's go look. You're learning something today if you're new. There it is. That chain de puis, as we'd say here in the United States. Or it's probably some other spelling, but look how long it is. All of these are old cinder cones. Let's get a side view on these. You might be able to make out the crater-like shape on a lot of these. There we are. So going across, they're covered in trees for the most part, but we go up here to the top, and here's the Smithsonian place mark on it. And we can zoom in on the crater. It's pretty interesting, right? All right, that's where the earthquake is right next to on the north side. This whole thing here goes over to the Eiffel volcanic field over to the east, which is thousands of square kilometers. It makes up this whole thing across Lorraine and Burgundy. Up into Rhineland, the West Eiffel meets up with the East Eiffel. It's huge. But really, it's just on the edge of the exterior portion of Europe. Let me show it to you this way. It's pretty interesting. Oh boy, I need to turn off all my place marks. There we go. Now that everything's off, you should be able to see it a little bit better. Like an S-shaped bend around Eastern Europe goes up and then makes like a camel's hump bend. And then goes back down and around and goes back down to the Pyrenees. And then goes back down and out to the west. And that matches with the plate boundary map that I showed you here, down to the south. But you see, they don't have anything across Europe here. It's totally open and blank, right? <laughs> but you can see it's connected by mountain ranges that come off the Alps and go down to the Pyrenees, which are right here. And the earthquakes follow that path. They go up and around, and that's why I've got my arrow on here. Now, if the push is great enough, when it comes out of South Europe and the Mediterranean, like I said, it goes around and through the plate. And we see new earthquakes pop off on the English Channel, up in Scotland, and then further all the way up, all the way up into Iceland and Svalbard and the North Pole. Now, Scotland just got hit. And I just watched the most interesting show, Men in Kilts. You see this? It's starring the people from um, Outlander, the guy from, oh man, Totally awesome show. It was hilarious. But they're up there in Scotland, and they went over here. I don't know which town they went to. I wish I would. I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. 
and write down the name of the town. But they're calling it the Pompeii of Scotland. And that the people were buried. Now, we know there's a big volcano up here. We get earthquakes up here all the time. Right next to... Let's see if I can find it. Man, I need to put a place mark on it. There it is. Here. Let's turn on the town names. That'll probably help us. Town names. Aknaha. The Aknaha is a remote village in Ardnamurkan, Lakanbar, the Scottish Council area of the Highland. One of the local tourist attractions is a remnant of an old volcano, which is weathered down to the level of an old magma chamber, which is this giant circular shape here. This thing. So, northwest tip of Scotland got hit by seismic. And then you don't see it on the screen here now. Let's see if it's still up. Nope, that was the Europeans reporting it. We add activity go all the way up to the North Pole a few days ago. Now, another sip. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Zero degrees? Man, not doing it on my throat, that's for sure. Over here to the east, what would you do if I told you the same sized earthquakes in the past few days, other than the seven, have spread across the rest of the planet? And I think I proved that to you already with the fives and the 5.3s going up to Alaska. Again, let me show you the fives so you can see this spread that I'm talking about here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Wait for it to refresh, guys. There it is. There we go. So the big earthquake, obviously, at Japan, but look at the fives around it. And 4.9s, of course. <laughs> but fives going out towards Alaska. 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 going over to Fiji, too. And 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 going in between our sixes, going across the whole western portion of the Pacific. Same thing going on over to the east. 5.1, 5.2. The only thing missing is now a 5.3. We even have the 4.9 nestled right into the middle of it. But taking it down one step, we're connected between. It's all fours connecting between. It's just like a magnitude less, basically. So we're a magnitude more on one side. We're a magnitude less on the other. We're out of balance. Big time movement on the underside of the plate here. Spreading over towards Europe. Spreading up towards Alaska. What's going to happen on the east side of the plate? Well, look at North America. Do you notice anything in the past two days? Let's go back a few days. Let's just take this back to the start of the week. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? So we take it right to the 4.0 level, and we're kind of connected between. But it's taking a step down. It's taking a big step down. One magnitude less coming into the United States. So why? We start with the big push on the underside of the plate that I showed you with this video again. Again, hammering action on the underside of the plate. Then it spreads up, out, and away in all directions from where the hammering action is happening, which is, in this case, over here for the most part. Fiji, Indonesia, Japan. But then the spread goes up, over, around, and down into the United States. By the time it goes up, over, around, and down, it loses about a magnitude's worth of energy. But that's not really that much of a loss. Professionals said something about some kind of fancy equations for elasticity and absorption and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's not taking place. Instead, we're getting a spread, and the spread is more like a standing wave spreading through a tank, like this. So, like, imagine these as the same-sized earthquakes. Pretty heavy to think about. Same-sized earthquakes spreading out across thousands of miles, but instead of a wave tank like in the laboratory, we're following these red lines. These are breaks through the plate. The red lines, the thick red lines, breaks through the plate, where two plates meet up. So there's a crack, theoretically, that goes from the surface all the way down through the plate to the underside of the plate, where the magma is. Well, the asthenosphere. So there's tension created by that hammering action that then spreads up, out, and over, and across. And by the, like I said, by the time we get to the United States, it takes a step down. There's a push that goes direct across, and you can see it. You can see which, which direction it goes. It goes up as far as into Central America and down as far as South Sandwich Islands, basically encompassing the whole coast of South America. And why does that happen? Let's show you. Hammering action over here spreads out equally across the plate, 
and look what it reaches on both sides here. A transfer zone, another series of fractures. They're like super highways for the force to flow in down to the south and up to the north. And what do you think that does in the middle? Well, you'll see it. Look, it's an equal distribution. It comes across and then spreads out. And it tries to reach all the way to the other sides of, let's show it to you this way, over on Google Earth. For the new viewers who are about to be mind blown because you've never looked at the planet this way. But we're going to turn the Earth on its axis this way. And now you'll see it, hopefully, flowing around the north side of South America this way. And flowing around the south side of South America this way. This is 20,000 feet higher than this. This is a drop off that goes down into a fold. And same with this. This is about 20,000 feet higher than down here. So it's like flowing molasses going out around South America in both directions. And the middle gets put under serious stress. And we see about the same sized earthquakes break out here, here, and here. And then it goes down to the south to this tip and to this tip. But let me bring it back north. It goes to the east to this tip and to this tip, not to the south. I was just using that because it's turned on the side. South is a direction, just so you understand. Goes and flows around South America, but you can trace both of these points back around and around, and they come back perfectly to this, which USGS has nothing going across the big open gray area, right? Well, there is something going across. Do you see these east and west facing fracture zones? These are not breaks between the plate. They're fractures through the plate. And they all go back to this crescent shape of under seamounts that bends back into South America. And this crescent shape goes up and meets up with the Hawaiian island chain. This is Tamu Massif, the biggest undersea volcano on the planet. And it goes up to the north and meets up with Kamchatka, Russia. So the island chain comes down, branches off to Hawaii, but the under seamount chain makes a C, a C shape, letter C, and it goes down around and up and over. Everywhere east of this under seamount chain has these equally spaced fracture zones. Somewhat equally spaced. They look like latitude on a map almost. They come down and go over. Well, that's the area that the energy transfers across, like a super highway. And we get back here, they're just open and blank with nothing on here. Well, energy transfers from over here to over here. And the earthquakes that spread out to the west tend to spread out over to the east. Equal distribution. So that should happen. Should happen in North America, but a magnitude less. And it should happen in South America about the same magnitude. So hold up. If we're getting sevens on one side of the plate and we just had a round of sevens on the other, which came first, right? The round over here. The round of sevens that just got done in South America. So first, it was sevens over here. Then the tennis match began. And we go over here to this side. But it's coming back. It'll come back. So it should be in the upper six level to near seven level. This time, I'm going to put it right here in the middle of the whole hot mess. South Peru, nor Chile. 7.0 level activity is incoming. Or very close to it. The second spot we have to watch. Central America. This is not good. I don't like having to deliver this news. Mexico City, going over to the coast next to Kalima, from letter V to letter V, from Popocatépetl volcano over to Colima volcano, out to the ocean. It's like really a triangular shape here. This is the spot to watch, unfortunately, and it could go also into that upper six level. So South America, Central America, should see about the same size that's striking over on the West Pacific. And in the West Pacific, we're dealing with multiple sevens and multiple sixes. So it stands to reason we should be dealing with at least upper sixes to near low sevens over on the east side of the plate in the middle of the mess and on the perimeter of the mess, which is Mexico and Chile. South Sandwich Islands is the other perimeter all the way down here next to these little islands and Antarctica, basically. There are people that live down here. I'll put it in the six-ish level as well, but it'll be most likely, I think, low six going down to the south. 
So upper 5, 5.96. But it should go down and around. If it's going to go up to the north, it should go down and around to the south. Remember what I told you. Flowing around to the south, flowing around to the north, and the middle comes under stress because it's transferring across from over across on this side of the plate. Okie dokie. Central America Caribbean. Well, we do have that 4.9 that I mentioned. It's out here off the coast of Colombia. But people were telling me there's oil rigs there. I, I have no idea if there are or not. If there are, I'll be extremely shocked. I had no idea. Let's go look. I don't know if they'll even have them imaged. They might not. They might. The only way to know is to look it up. Oil rigs, huh? Now, I know they have some in Venezuela but and, and off the coast of Mexico, but this seems pretty far out there. Again, I, I'm just going on what people are commenting. People are commenting, that, that water is 10, 11,000 feet deep. We're talking like deep water horizon well level. So I doubt it's that far out. Maybe along the coast somewhere. Okay, far enough away. It's not an oil well or a platform like people were saying in chat. But, again, we're on the edge of the craton or at the edge of the plate, I mean, which goes over to the east on the plate boundary. Now, I'll get into cratons in a minute. I don't know where the craton is in this one, quite frankly, but... Let me show you the plate foundry here. Going across the Caribbean. Now, last week was a strikeout for me. Instead of seeing Cayman Islands get hit, we saw a series of threes break out over here to the east in Dominican Republic. That's about, what is that? One, two, 500 miles off. So, 500 miles off, I mean, that's a miss. So nothing struck at the plate. Oh, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Sorry, a little little sneezy cough there. You don't want to hear that, do you? ASMR times ten. Okay, so the stair step boundary here is the spot we were watching last week. Total strikeout, nothing hit. Instead, oh, I got another sneeze. Hold on. Woo! Dang! Blow your eardrums out. Wow! That'll cl that opened me up now. Woo! Where was I? Ah, oh, yeah, the stair step boundary. We missed it. Oh, who cares? Oh, my trolls? Okay, well, who cares then? Oh, uh, Puffs Plus. I don't get anything for recommending Puffs Plus either, man. All this brand name shit I'm doing here. Oh, yes, dear. I'm sorry. She said watch your mouth. Pardon my language. En français. Okay, so nothing hit. That's a strikeout for me. And I'm still watching, but when I miss, if it misses and it, nothing strikes for several days and it still stays in open area and we start seeing a bunch of activity over on the western side like this, look again. We might just be five days late and this is the spot to watch still. You got to remember there was that seven point something earthquake that struck a few years ago right there. And it was at a time kind of like now where there were sevens popping off on both sides of the plate. I'm not saying that's going to happen now. I'm still going to watch for a 4.9 to 5.0 earthquake there. But it is a strikeout point for me last week, just so you know. Now, East Coast United States before we get into anything else. Check it out. 3.3 earthquake striking out here. And look where it is. Do you see this? discolored portion here looks almost looks like a channel or something well that wasn't cleaned out by humans guys that's what 50 miles across that is a break in the edge of the craton that goes out to the edge of the actual continental shelf out in the ocean but the craton speaks for itself it goes back over to maine back down the east coast to virginia and let me just show you what happened over the past week look this is seven days worth of earthquakes and look who got hit, the coast of Nova Scotia at the border of Maine and New Brunswick. Check it off the list. We warned them. Delaware and New Jersey did not get hit. There was no earthquake activity over here in Delaware at all. Or New Jersey. But it's a big open silent zone now. We have earthquakes on the north side, 3.0 range. And we have earthquakes on the southern side, also going to near 3.0 range, 2.7. And we are directly on the edge of the craton. There is no doubting that. Here, one more time, compare it. 
going all the way up to the east coast. And maybe you can't see it because of all the magnitudes. Let me just turn off the magnitudes so you can see the rings. Now you should be able to compare it. It's a perfect match going down through Texas. Do you see that? And it goes back up across the east coast. I'm making a big deal about that because professionals said this was all impossible to happen. As a matter of fact, I tried to show this to professionals for years and years. And at first they said it was chance or coincidence that there was no possible transfer going across the plate. But, I mean, this is seven days worth of earthquakes. <laughs> There's no transfer going across the plate. What are you talking about, Dutch sense? you got to be kidding me. You have no formal education. We're not going to listen to you at all. Okay, all right, whatever you say, guys. Check it out. Here we are seven or eight years later after showing them. Chance or coincidence? Please. Now, why is this happening? Well, there's a push going on, and it's coming from up here. Trace all these earthquakes back to their origin point where there's nothing, where they're not reporting earthquakes out in the ocean. Imagine a five or a six out here. That's what you, there should be. They're just not reporting them. People are seeing them on the spectros. They're reporting them to me and in chat. We're watching the spectros. Here's the link. Go over and see it. It's propagating out to other stations off the coast of BC and Washington State. And what happens? No earthquake gets reported by the USGS or PNSN. The colleges ignore it. Everybody ignores it. Pretends like it doesn't happen. But the reason they're doing that is so you don't see that there's a big cluster of earthquakes up in Alaska and it all piles up here with an earthquake out in the ocean and then it spreads out across the plate. They don't want you to see that because they said it couldn't happen. And they printed it in books and put it in writing and signed their names to it. <laughs> and then along comes a guy on social media and he thinks that me, who think I'm speaking to myself in the third person, and you think that nobody knows and you think that the professionals didn't know and you try to show them and they already knew, but they were hiding it because they previously said it couldn't happen and it negates the equations of elasticity and da 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 and next thing you know, the earthquakes start disappearing off the feeds and there's nothing going on in the Pacific Northwest. That's what's going on. And you got to complain enough. And then if they feel embarrassed or the public pressure, people start contacting them, all of a sudden earthquakes start to get reported out off the coast. Pretty weird that that happens too. I've been documenting that, by the way, from the time where my viewers contact them to the time where they report the earthquakes. It's usually a turnaround time of about 24 hours when the public pressure is great enough on the agencies in the Northwest. Now, people ask me, why do they hide them? I, I don't know. I mean, you want me to be Sherlock Holmes on top of the earthquake forecaster? I don't know people's motivations. I just know that they're trying to hide them. Why? It could be anything from politics to real estate costs to being wrong and not wanting to admit it. All kinds of things. Human pathology is weird. It's not my specialty. Let's go look at 24 hours worth of earthquakes now that we've looked at the past week. And we just want to see the last 24. This is going to give us a good idea of the eras that are currently moving in the United States. And we need to know those because that dictates what's getting ready to move next. So, for instance, far northeast, I already told you, 3.3 struck this morning edge of the Craton. And you can see a series of twos striking back down here across Oklahoma, going over into Arkansas at the pumping operations. These are all oil and gas pumping ops, Arkansas and Oklahoma. I can prove that. We can just pull the coordinates on any one of these quakes and show you the drill points at these locations. This is basically a surface earthquake. 0 0.1? Yeah, 0 0.1 kilometer depth. I have all my place marks turned off. But we shouldn't even need them. Here, yeah, yeah, look. There's the nearest well right next to it. And this imagery date, 2019. All these little pads in the ground are different oil wells. Oil and gas. Fracking. So they'll drill out a few hundred to a few thousand feet, maybe even a few kilometers down. They'll also drill out and over. So all of these different drill points can spread out and away, not just up and down vertically. They can go horizontal by miles. And so none of these are houses. All of these are oil wells. Got a good high-resolution image on that. Look at that. That's a good shot of it in 2019. And you see how many they are. They really start to go into overdrive here. They have 500,000 different drill points across 
Oklahoma alone. And that's where we are in Oklahoma. Now, look at this. Do you see this right here going through Texas? You see that? It looks like a river almost. That's a bulge. This is 1,000 feet higher than this. We have a 1,000 foot rise all the way across here. And it goes right through Dallas, doesn't it? Now, it makes a bend, and it goes across the Big Bend Desert, and it goes back up into New Mexico, and it goes up into the mountain ranges of the Rocky Mountains. Let me turn off the border labels and all that good stuff compared to the Craton. Colorado, New Mexico, Texas. And then it goes over to the east, makes a bend into the New Madrid seismic zone. This is the New Madrid here. That's Missouri. Here's the New Madrid seismic zone. And then it makes a U-shaped bend down to the south and goes back up the east coast. One more time, following the edge of the Craton. And the earthquakes follow that. This is 24 hours. So why am I taking the time to show that all to you? We now have a halfway point between these earthquakes and this earthquake up in the northeast. What's the halfway point if we go up and around and down and back up? I would say the halfway point brings us into Virginia. If we go up and around and back down, do you see that? So straighten this out to a straight line. It would put the halfway point right at the previous warned area. We go out to New Jersey, over to the east, Delaware, New Jersey. And over to the west, we're on the edge of the Graton going over into Virginia. So I'm going to keep the warning going there. And the warning should be for mid-range 3 to near 4.0 level. Enough to actually get your attention. So I would take the combined total of the 3.3, plus all the 2s and etc. back over off to the west, combine them together, and that's the total. Again, mid-range 3 to upper 3 to near 4. I'll, I'll, let's say upper 3. Over to the west. Colorado started to get hit a couple days ago. We don't need to talk about that now, but... Southern Colorado also drilled right here across the border all the way over to the Four Corners region. Here across the whole southern border, tens of thousands of oil and gas drill points going down into New Mexico and up into Colorado. And they all got hit over the past few days with new earthquakes. Let's show you. Here's Southern Co Oh, by the way, this is the weirdest thing of all. Do you see this green splotch of the... Colorado Rockies, do you see that? Here, let me turn off the borders and labels. But that's Colorado right the center right there. Do you see that? Now, paradelia is when a human sees something, like a face in a rock and or a face in a tree or a face in a cloud. Okay, it's just seeing things. Now, look at this, okay? Now, from a distance, this kind of looks like the head of a horse with two galloping or bucking bronco level legs lifted up like a, again like a rearing horse and this could be a guy in a cloak sitting on the back of it but the reason i'm showing you this green headed rearing horse the green gray headed rearing horse out here right at the tip of the snout of the horse is this the denver international airport where they built the weirdest thing when you drive out of the uh airport right here They've got the same dang Bronco. It's not the Broncos from the Denver Broncos. And it's a blue-gray with red eyes. It's the craziest thing. But they got that horse out there in front of the horse that's right here that makes up this shape of a paradelia out of the map, which I just mind-blown by all that. It's kind of like we're living in the Wizard of Oz or something. The land of Zardoz. Let me get out my... Hairy chest. Wait, never mind. If you don't know about Zardoz, you have no idea what I'm talking about. The earthquake forecaster talking about hairy chest. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> How am I getting sidetracked? I'm just in a weird mood today, guys. Look, I, I'm. I, you're lucky I'm even laughing. Okay. Montana, a line of earthquakes going out of Montana down to Yellowstone again. But the number of earthquakes is low. We have one, two, three, four, five different quakes in 24 hours time. That's next to nothing. We've seen dozens strike here. Yellowstone itself, no earthquakes. Meanwhile, there's hundreds of tremors, or thousands even sometimes, 
per day in Yellowstone. As the magma moves down below, little vibrations, but they're not exactly earthquakes. There's no fracturing going on in the crust up above the magma chamber. Like, this is actual earthquake activity, and we get tremor activity at the volcano, but it's quiet. Seismically speaking, earthquake-wise, fracture-wise, it's pretty quiet up in the northwest, which is really weird. Why is it really weird that we'd be quiet in the northwest? Well, over here along the coast, over the past few weeks, Vancouver Island, Washington, Oregon, Northern California, all moving exponentially with a slow slip, an episodic tremor slip that the professionals stayed somewhat tight-lipped about. But I would like to go over and just check the tremor map and see what it shows. Well, look at that. As of the 15th, yesterday, a cluster in southwest Vancouver Island still. And two more clusters down in central and southern Oregon. Now these points, here, here, and here, correspond to the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone out in the ocean. Out beyond the Cascadia Subduction Zone, over to the west, this. These fractures point like arrows into the spots which are shifting on land. So these three distinct arrows pointing into the spot that's shifting in Vancouver Island. Central Oregon corresponding with the pinnacle most point out in the ocean right here. And down to the south, this arrow pointing into the spot that's shifting in southwest Oregon. That's just yesterday. Let's go back a few days. Let's go back to like the 7th or the 8th last week. There we go. There we go. 621. And they're reaching across the Canadian border going down into the Olympic Peninsula. And then, of course, we're still in southwest Oregon and still in northern California. Go forward to the ninth. Look at that. It spread. It spread across the whole Olympic Peninsula. It also shifted slightly up to Portland and shifted slightly back into the Medford, Oregon, southwest Oregon region. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone while I was doing that. Go to the tenth, and it spread even more. Now, the number of, earth, or number of tremors on this, again, are small in comparison to previous ETSs, which we've seen thousands of these before in a day's time. But 400, it's nothing to scoff at. Go forward another day to the 11th. Starts to die down, doesn't it? But the spots stayed pretty much the same, shifting in California slightly. To the 12th, all of a sudden it's down next to nothing, like 30, and that's it. Now, these are not really earthquakes, guys. These are small vibrations as the plate is shifting. They are assigned magnitudes, but they're not quakes. The plate vibrating, but the vibration went down next to nothing. Look, it went down to 10 on the 13th. Then the 14th. Boom, it starts to come back. But this time, it's coming back down to the south, right at that pinnacle point. Let me turn this on here. Again, where the arrow is pointing slightly to the north by northeast, isn't it? Again, it's not per pointing perfectly east. It's pointing north by northeast. Right up to it. That's the 14th. Now look, here we are yesterday. Starts to pick up to 178 again. So the plate is vibrating and shifting. It's not a full-fledged thousands per day ETS, but it still is slipping. And when it slips, the areas around compensate. Down to the south, up to the north, and over to the east. So up to the north, well, we've already talked about the flow coming in from Alaska. Up here coming across the Aleutian Island chain, all the fives coming in over the past few days. But once we get down here off the coast, it's just like there's no fives, there's nothing. And I think they're not reporting quinks out there. So, if you imagine a five out there, this past week, when the previous push came through, that explains the threes going across the plate. So they are ignoring earthquakes out there, for sure. It's not up for debate. They are for sure ignoring earthquakes out here off the coast. No one can convince me otherwise. Now, we would expect a new earthquake to break out on land going down into California very soon within the next, let's see, today's the 16th. So 17th, 18th, by the 20th, let's say by Saturday, I wouldn't think it would take the whole week, the whole seven-day time period from the point where the slow slip starts to stop. But the slow slip did start to stop. It just showed it to you. The slow slip went down to next to nothing. Now it's picking back up again, but it's picking back up in a different spot picking back up down in Oregon and kind of transferring out of Vancouver Island, which means, hold up, let's go back to my map here. Look at which way the arrows point. 
and they point over to the edge of the Craton, which a new earthquake just struck at the pumping operations in Oklahoma, by the way. But the Craton is going to be displaced, and California is going to also be displaced as a result of the transfer coming out of the Juan de Fuca. The plate is shifting. So it's going over to the East Coast 3.0 level, and it's gone down across California-Nevada border on a 3.0 level. The biggest of the bunch struck a few days ago down in Ridgecrest, and Ridgecrest got 4.0 level activity, which is right next to the volcanoes of all places. But this is just 24 hours worth of earthquakes here, and what I'm going to tell you right now, the number of earthquakes here, especially in Southern California, is low. Let me make sure I've got the right tur feed turned on. Yeah, I do. So we swarmed up, and I've been gone for the past few days because of my cat. But we swarmed up, we went up to 4.0 at Ridgecrest, now it's just went poof. The energy that went across the plate has now reached all the way over to Nova Scotia. But the new push, this, too quiet. Way too quiet. Too quiet out in the, wait, come on, there's sevens going on across the rest of the planet. Seven, sixes, fives going on all the way around the rest of the plate. Way too quiet here along the coast, which means we're going to see something break out on land. Whether or not they ignore the earthquake out in the ocean, sure, they can do that. That's not wise. Because when you see an earthquake strike out here in the Juan de Fuca out in the ocean, it's usually followed by significant activity downstream. Now, we have two more days to go in my warning for the Bay Area. So I've been gone for three days, again because of the cat, but we're still watching. And I'm now going to have to winnow down the area even more so we can take this between our current sets of earthquakes on the north and south side. And that puts us right here, right at Mount Diablo, south of Mount Diablo State Park again. And I'm still warning for 5.0. Same with down to the south. Even though a 4 struck at Ridgecrest, look at the number of quakes. I mean, really, one earthquake at the super volcano at the California-Nevada border? That's Long Valley Caldera. Let me show it to you. Let me turn on my borders and labels here. And we'll turn on the volcanoes too. So over here, here's the super volcano. Oh, wait. Guys, hold on. We have hot spots temporarily filtered out by the computer. They don't know what to make of it. The computer doesn't. Hot spots popping up over here in the mountains. Oh, wow. Right next to the super volcano going down across Owens Valley. Here's another set right here. So we have an outbreak of one, two, three. Oh, look, there's four. Four hot spots across Owens Valley going back up to. Oh, wait, hold on. They carry on in a diagonal line going back up here right next to Carson City east of Lake Tahoe. And they branch out and go south of Lake Tahoe down here into the Sierra Nevadas. We also have two hotspots over here next to the Bay Area, one up to the north next to Geysers. These little red dots is what I'm looking for here. The satellite is filtering them out. It doesn't know what to make of them. Another one up here in the north part of the valley. We've got an outbreak of hotspots going on across central California, going over into the deserts of Nevada, out here in the middle of nowhere where you literally have nothing to burn except for a little sagebrush. That's wild. Okay. When we see these hotspots pop off like this, get suspicious. Starts to make me think there's something going on seismically speaking. Could be piezoelectric, piezoelectric energy being dispersed in the crust, showing up as a hotspot. Could be actual heat coming out of some kind, geothermal. Electrical. Could be a shortwave emission of some kind, some weird thing going on we don't understand. All I know is hotspots show up next to these volcanoes, along these fault zones, and then earthquakes start to pop off along where these hotspots take place. It's happened enough that it's made me suspicious to start to look for it. And now when I see it, and look where it's happening one more time, hold on. Going down here from the supervolcano, going down in a diagonal line, down to here. Oh look, there's one right down here next to our odd fissures that I found. Found these odd fissures in the ground right through here it's not a rock wall this thing you can follow it you can follow this through the mountains and it comes out on the other side over here you see it anyway uh mark that before but 
Okay, so these are all volcanoes right here. All these are lava flows. All these are volcanoes. Going back up the valley, up here, there's another set. And here, there's another set. And that's where our hotspots are happening right next to. Going down through Ridgecrest. But that's the fault. Let me show the fault zone map now. The same spot that I just showed you, that valley, is this. The Owens Valley, it meets back up to this whole broken mess where the super volcano is, up here at the California-Nevada border. Going down to the east by southeast, though, that's the line of hotspots along here. And then it follows back up here to Lake Tahoe. Jumps over to the valley. I'm going to say it, the plate shifting. Plate shifting from up here, and we're going to see a break happen. The break should be on the equal to what's going on around the rest of the plate. So if we're seeing fives and sixes on and sevens on one side of the plate, I would say at least fives and sixes on the other, like Central and South America. So this puts us on the scheme for mid-range six level to strike out in the ocean. I don't know if they'll be able to hide that, quite frankly. It means six to six point five out in the ocean. Back on the pinnacle tip of this, which goes back out into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone where there's nothing right now out here. So if we have movement coming in from Alaska, going up at least into Alaska, and we have movement going across the whole plate up to the East Coast following the Craton, and this is all slipping, then we should see a new quake out here in the ocean, and we should see a new five down in the Bay Area. The four, again, is the previous push that came in from this past week. The four that struck at Ridgecrest. By the way, the four that struck at Ridgecrest struck where all these rings are overlapping right now for the last 24 hours. Quite literally, that's where the four struck. So see how all those rings overlap right there? That is Ridgecrest. That is this place right here. China Lake, Ridgecrest, and Volcano Peak. Owens Valley shifting, no doubt about it. You know what? Let's go ahead and issue a new warning right now. Seven-day warning on this one. This will take us back to the California-Nevada border. Let's put it right at the border region. We have to warn everybody from Mammoth Mountain all the way over to Monte Cristo Hills over here to the east, across here. And I'll put it at a five level as well. So the same size that strikes in the Bay Area should also strike over on the other side of California. But it should take, I think, just a couple days longer. And these hotspots are kind of telling us, look, I mean, look, they're, they're not going anywhere else across all of Nevada. They're centered right in here. All these little red dots, this one, this one, this one, this one. Do you see that? They're all centered around in this area where we're going to have a break. Bay Area over to the super volcano. Out in the ocean, we can't see the hotspots. Notice the coverage area for the hotspots ends right out here where this big, thick red line is out in the ocean. The big box. But we're not getting hotspots pretty much anywhere else across the northwest. So something's up, and we know the plate's shifting. So we know that's taking place. And if the plate's shifting, and we start seeing hotspots in California, pay attention. That's when the brakes start. The heat release, brakes start. Now look down here in Southern California, the number of earthquakes, it's a handful. If you guys are normally got a snare drum rolling, this is just somebody single-handedly sitting there hitting the drum. Bup, bup, bup. This is 24 hours. It is next to nothing down to the south as well. So if this was a flowing river, it's been cut off. The shift or the build is still taking place up here. I think more like a spring loading that's taking place up here right now. And then that's going to hammer out and go across the plate. Southern California is going to be on the tail end of this. And I think it too, by the end of this seven-day time period, so let's get seven days on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. By Tuesday, the 23rd, we should also see a swarm down here at Southern California. Salton Sea, that's been the spot to get hit over and over again. The past several times I've been issuing the warnings in Southern California, it's just gone to Salton Sea each time. I'll warn from the border up to Salton Sea, on the western side of Salton Sea still. And I think technically we still have another day or two to go in last week's watch. So it could just be that they're overlapping. 
for Southern California. Bay Area is still high and dry. All of California is pretty much high and dry. And all the Northwest is pretty much high and dry. So you're probably wondering about these two. These are the only two earthquakes up here in the Northwest so far. What's going on there? Amboy, Washington. Anybody know what's 0.3 kilometers above sea level? So we're up above sea level. We have an earthquake up in the sky. No, we're up in a mountain. We're up inside of a mountain. Look where we are. We're up inside of Mount St. Helens. Let's see, our altitude here is 5,245 feet above sea level. And the earthquake is coming in 0.3, something like that. So we are up above sea level. We're right at the surface, right on the side of Mount St. Helens. And that's where the only two earthquakes that are reported for today are. Now, it doesn't mean that Mount St. Helens is going to erupt or anything. It's just a sign that the magma chamber is being slightly perturbed. They're choosing to show that to us for some reason. Where else have I not talked about? Well, this stack of earthquakes here is at Geysers. The Geysers. Geyserville, California. Cobb or Anderson is the other name for it. Let's click on another earthquake, see if it brings up a different triangulated coordinate. Cobb, Cobb. Geysers. There we go. The name Geysers tells you what's there, but if you're a new viewer, you just got to understand. There's a volcano here that humans drilled into, and there's a hot spot right next to it. Go figure. There's the hot spot out in the mountains, and over here are all the geothermal turbines where they drilled in to get steam to generate electricity. And the electrical grid also tends to show us hot spots at power generation stations, high voltage power lines, transmission stations, solar farms, wind farms also tend to produce hot spots. Let's go across the rest of the country and show you some examples of that. See the red dots going across down in Florida or hey, hey, what are the chances? I got a question for everybody. What are the chances that the red dots would follow the edge of the craton all the way up the east coast up to Virginia's border right next to New Jersey. There's Jersey. There's Virginia. Right there. Hot spots going down across the Craton Edge. You see it. It's it's undeniable, too. It really is. I, I'm not picking and choosing which ones to show to you. It really is going across the edge of the Craton, right? At least on the East Coast. So, hold on. Weren't they going the edge of the Craton over here along, following the faults on the West Coast, too? Hmm, where else are they going across the edge of the Craton? Oh, I don't know. How about Colorado? Central Colorado going down through New Mexico and Texas, making a bend through Texas, and going back up through the New Madrid seismic zone. And meanwhile, the rest of the country, look, you see any red dots across the rest of the country? The red dots, the hot spots that the computer is choosing to filter because it can't make out what it is, are going across the edge of the Kratom. It would mean some kind of heat signature or a misreading by the computer, some kind of electrical signature, short wave, I don't know, radio waves, could be anything that could be causing interference that's picked up as a heat signature, but it's happening across the edge of the Kratom. That's a big deal because the earthquakes are going across the edge of the Kraton. Almost the exact same path. That's wild, isn't it? Let's go turn back on the seven-day feed and just wrap this up now. It's been a good little update here. And I needed to do something, man, with my time. Sitting around, moping around, and mourning the loss of a loved one is not exactly the best recommended thing to do to focus on all day if you guys ever have a loss. Remember to... Still try to do what you do. Don't lose yourself in your grief. Anyway. Um, all right, guys. Much love. Thank you to everyone who's wished the Duchess and I well over the past several days with what we've been going through. You've made a big difference. You've really made me feel a lot better. Over on Twitch, on YouTube too. You guys have been very kind. Even I'm going to say it. Even a few of my trolls from the Facebook page came over and actually wished us well. So... They're not entirely heartless, I guess. It's amazing. It, it, honestly, I was I, that made me cry. But you guys, much love. Thank you. And I will be back. I'm going to save this as a video. We're going to upload this over on YouTube. 
And quickly, while I've got you on here, let's just turn this off. Let's go over and see what's going on. Oh, check the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center. Well, of course I didn't check it today. It's the one thing I forgot to check. Let's go see what's up. Mount Etna. Uh-oh. What? Mount Etna. Very strong ash emissions going on right now. Hold on. Let's see what's going on. Wow! 33,000 foot high blast at Mount Etna? Flight level... Wait, is that right? Hold on. Observe volcanic ash clouds surface to FL 330. Yeah, 330, guys. 33,000 feet. That's a big one for Italy. Okay, hold on. We are not done yet. We're going over to Italy. Mount Etna. Wow. Well, that's going to settle out around the area. Here's Mount Etna, Sicily, of course. And there's the, it's a well-known volcano. It's active a lot, but normally it doesn't do big ash emissions like that. So that means, uh, well, I don't know which way the winds are blowing over in Europe right now. So whichever way the winds prevailing right now, surface level again is going to dictate that going up a few thousand feet. 33,000 feet gets us up into upper level. But surface level is where I'd worry about the localized fallout on that. Otherwise, they're going to have to actually issue warnings all the way around the area. That's a high traffic air traffic area. Wow. Okay, well, you know what? Let's go look at the rest of the volcanic ash list really quick, see if anything else is going on. That's a big blast over in Europe, by the way. It's also on the red line. Interior. Hold on, isn't that where I just warned? Ha! <laughs> when did this happen? Hold on, when did Etna get hit? It, did it just happen? It did. It, it just happened. Etna just happened. It's the last two warnings on the list. When did this get... 1714 UTC. Is that right? Is that UTC time? Well, I didn't know about it. Wow, okay. But I'm still going to look for a seismic there. That, that does not fulfill the forecast. I'm just saying that's in the spot where we issued our warning right there. Going from Sicily up to Campo Basso. It's where all the rings overlap. Let's show it to you this way. I just showed it to you at the start of the update, but see where all three sets of rings overlap plus our deep earthquake over on the east side of there? Again, right through here, down to the south. And we had warned right there. So it's just south. Again, Mount Etna is on Sicily. Wow. All right, 33,000. A sign of force coming in across Europe on the plate boundary, the red line, which is, again, just the transfer zone. It's like a river flowing out of the Mideast, going over to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and you're kind of nestled right in the middle of there where they all meet together. Okay? Word up, much love, everyone. Now we are done, I think. I think we're done. You guys go over and check the webcams for Mount Etna. I think they do have a copyright issue with live streams showing that. Pretty sure. If not, again, I don't want to step on it, but it's a science agency over in Italy, but I think they have some company that handles it or something for them. Anyway, you guys go check it out. If it's an impressive blast, it'll be making the news. Certainly 33,000 feet is impressive to me, but not again for the news. Uh, who knows? Peace out, word up, much love, enjoy the winter weather. Look at this, look out there. That lake is, for, oh, look at the tracks. The tracks go out to the buoy, so, uh, maybe a raccoon or a possum or something, but it goes all the way across the lake, over to the other dock across all the way on the other side of the lake. So it's frozen. The whole lake is frozen. This is the fifth time since this community has been open in the last 60 years, 50 to 60 years this place has been here, this is the fifth time ever that the whole lake has frozen over. So, amazing. Totally cold. Let me hit refresh on the uh, temperature here just to see if we can get the most recent. Yeah, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the high. It's actually warming up right now. But it's going to drop back down tonight to zero. And then we got more snow coming in tomorrow. So winter time is here. Anybody need a roommate down in Florida? I'm on my way.
Me and the Duchess, we're coming. We're bringing the cats. Much love. Peace out.